How's it going guys? Welcome back to another Anthem video. So today I wanted to talk about Endgame and the impact raids have in games like Anthem, Destiny, The Division, and the importance of these pivotal, pinnacle Endgame contents that keeps us striving to better ourselves. Why they are important, why they are needed, and what purpose they serve. Before I go any further with that discussion, I do have a giveaway going on currently for Anthem the game. If you want to be in with a chance to win, simply click on the link in the description below or on the pinned comment for a chance to win. It's simple as that. So first thing first, I want to issue out an apology. It seems Solo Union made a valid point in the comment section of my last video. I did indeed misinterpret the image. All along I've assumed and believed that the release date for the early access was on the 15th of February, but at 10.30pm for UK. However, this is not the case. It seems the actual image was showing the 14th of February. Origins access on PC was also showing the 14th and as such has since been amended to reflect the new times. So whereas previously the early access was released on the 14th of February at 10.30pm for UK time GMT, it is now the 15th of February at 3 p.m. GMT. So I do apologize for that. As you can see on screen right now, this is pretty much the new schedule that has been quickly amended and released. These times are set in final and they are correct. So again, an apology and a thank you to Solo Union for bringing this to my attention in the comment section. As you can see, I do really read every comment that is pasted there. Good or bad, I do read them. As you've been seeing in the background, you've seen you're watching the trailer that was released by Neil Blomkamp. I'm going to have the link to the original video on the original Anthem channel in the description below. I highly advise if you haven't watched it yet to go check it out. This trailer is absolutely amazing. It's set decades before the actual game is released and it shows when you actually start watching it and you see the story and everything unfolding, it's truly mind blowing. I really do hope that EA takes the momentum from this and maybe even sanctions of an actual movie of this. This is something I would pay money to go and watch. I enjoyed this trailer so much. I haven't actually liked a trailer this much in such a long time. So to Neil, fantastic job, man. You outdone yourself yet again. So if you haven't seen the trailer, click on the link after you finish watching this, obviously, and then go check it out because it's amazing. Seriously, the narration, the interchanges, everything is just done to such high standard. It is really, really good. Right, so let's go on to some Q&A. I know, right? It's been a while since we've done one of these. So it seems AKC has a question for Michael. I hear there's a day one patch on February the 22nd. So does this mean the early access players will be playing the same build as we did in the demo? How much different is the Feb 22nd launch going to be? Michael Gamble responds with, absolutely not the same build. So rest assured guys, the early access is not the same build. The February 15th build has thousands of changes since then. The February 22nd one just has more. It's that simple. Because they have more time to work on it, they can work on the day one patch that little bit longer. But on the day one patch, you'll also be getting all of these on your early access build. So again, another important question regarding the early access. Are there really two different versions to download? I did not find a different version for Origin Premiere other than the version included in the vault. Again, there is only one version for the 15th. The Trial and Premiere use the same build, they are the same game. The Trial simply hasn't been unlocked, but essentially the Trial and the Premiere build are identical copies of the game, just one is unlocked for free use. And this one is completely different to what I've been talking about, but this one is really awesome. So JR asked, for the Ranger, overall damage output falls very short compared to other Javelins, giving Ranger access to heavy weapons, even if restricted to one at a time, would balance this without having to buff abilities. Would also push role of jack of all trades, right? Ben Irving simply responded with, what if I told you they get the only shield penetration gear item in the game? We changed energy pulse. It's pretty good. The only thing I can say to that is that Ben Irving is seriously testing my loyalty to the Colossus because a shield penetrating gear item is amazing because it pretty much is going to go straight through the shield and do raw damage. So this is pretty crazy, right? 
With those out of the way, I wanted to talk about Endgame and why it's important to Anthem, and why it's important to games like Anthem, like Destiny, like The Division. What is it about Endgame raids that makes it so coveted? So let's start from the beginning. You start the game, you play through the main campaign, you get to max level, you enjoy all the experience that comes from it. You've got the mid-core content. Once you've gone through those, you come to the end game content. Once you get to the end game content, that's where the true difficulty and the true struggle begins. In looter shooters generally, that's usually situated in just finding the best gear you can, especially when it came to the division, for example. Destiny went the opposite route and pretty much from the get-go focused on raids. Raids were everything. You had the Vault of Glass, Crota's End, Wrath of the Machine, and it goes on. Destiny 2 has had a number of raids as well. Be it good or bad, the raids are where it's at, especially when it comes to Destiny. So Anthem has decided to go with the Cataclysm side of things. We don't know anything about this, so I'm not going to sit here and say the Cataclysms are complete trash, the Cataclysms are complete shit. I'm not going to sit here and do that. Bioware have also opted to remain with the four-man team. Division 2 has gone from four to eight players when it comes to raids, and Destiny goes from three to six players. However, Anthem has remained at four-player core. You don't need extra players when you're going into the endgame aspirational content, as Ben Irving puts it, to do the Cataclysm endgame content. But why is raids so important, and why do people desire it? Raids are important because it helps you stand out from the rest. I know this sounds like a big-headed thing to say, I know it sounds like a really kind of egotistic thing to say, but when we talk about raids, we talk about difficult content, mechanics, things like this that change the way we actually play the game. They impact things in many different ways, and because of this, you can't just go in blindly and expect to clear that said content. It just doesn't work like that. If you look at the first raid, Leviathan, in Destiny 2, Everything from beginning to the end was pretty much so mechanic based that for many it was too much. But you had to work as a team in order to get through that content. If you did not work as a team and everyone didn't do their role, you started to struggle. So what does raids bring to the table? What does this what does aspirational endgame content bring to the table? Well when we go into this sort of content, we hope that it will provide us with raid specific loot. This is one of the first things you go for, because those are supposed to be the best of the best. This being a PvE only centric game, at least for the time being, means it won't impact other players, but if you do have a raid weapon, or a cataclysmic weapon, it could be called that, you never know. But if we do have cataclysmic weapons, well they could actually start having elements based on them. They could provide different stats that normal weapons can't have. Back in Destiny 1, if you got the raid weapons, especially in the kinetic slot, they had elements. These were only attainable through Trials of Osiris and the raid. These were literally the pinnacle endgame contents. Having something like this gives you even more incentive to go in and do it, because you want the best loot. In order to get the best loot, you have to work as a team. Overall, the whole encounter is embedded in teamwork, but it also gives you that thrill and excitement of challenging content. When we look at the strongholds, sure, they're endgame, but ultimately they're like strikes or nightfalls if you've played Destiny. Now, I'm not comparing it to Destiny, but there are certain aspects of game design that are very similar. They are just missions with higher difficulty, with an actual boss at the end that drops good loot. And that's it. They are pretty much, as I would call it, strikes or nightfalls. They're not the raid type content, that is for the Cataclysm that's going to be arriving at some point in Update 3 when we get Echoes of Reality. To me, raids are fundamental to the game. Endgame content, aspirational content, is fundamental to the game. I don't know how you guys feel about it, I don't know if you guys feel you need it. I know that when it comes to the aspirational content in Anthem, they are going to make it based on multiple different difficulty layers. And I assume with this, the drop chances for the best weapons will also change according to those difficulties. So if you are looking for the best chance to get the best loot, you're probably going to want to do it on Grandmaster 3 if you're capable to do so. 
How do you guys feel about endgame content? Do you like the idea of raids? Are you scared at the notion of raids? I know a lot of people get really kind of put off the word raid and maybe this is why Anthem isn't using the term raid here. It could very well be that is the case. If you look on the forums for other games, the moment you hear the word raid, people are like, hold up. Stop right there. I ain't going anywhere near that shit. No way. That's too much hassle, too much toxicity. Screw that, I'm out. I'll just do the regular content that I know I can do. And there is this stigma around it, that there really is. But in reality, as long as you can communicate, as long as you know what you're doing, and as long as, well, it really helps if you're not in a toxic environment, raids are really fun to do. And if you're in the right mix, it's one of the best contents you can do with a group of friends. But at the end of the day, I think raids bring so much value to the table. What do you think? Let me know in the comments section below. Like I said, there is no hating, there is no diminishing one game over the other. Every game has their own version of aspirational content. The Division had incursions, they're not raids, they are incursions, they are different. Destiny has full on raids, Final Fantasy XIV has full on raids. Final Fantasy XI, the previous MMO, had a different version of online experience that could have up to 18 players going to a certain area and spawning bosses that you could fight. It did it in a completely different way. Anthem is now doing it in their own way, trying to be unique. And for that, it's fine. I've got no problem with that whatsoever. As long as the content provides me with the fun factor that I'm hoping it will, that's great. Do you think the Cataclysms will deliver? I mean, yeah, we know nothing about it, we just know the little nuances that they keep teasing about, but do you believe it will be enough? Let me know in the comment section below. Well, that's pretty much where I'm going to end this video, that's all I wanted to talk about. I just wanted to have a discussion about endgame raids, and how they impact certain franchises, how they impact everyone else, and generally what they can do for the game. Because, in my honest opinion, raids can define a game. Endgame content or aspirational content, as Ben Irving keeps putting it, can inspire and bring in so many players and it can make the game. So with that said, I'm going to leave it there. Thank you for watching. If you have enjoyed this discussion, bits of news and the apology at the beginning, because, you know, I'm not that big headed to say that I'm always right, even though I'm never wrong. I will say I do appreciate your viewership. I do appreciate your comments. I do read them. And if I am wrong at any point, I'm happy to put my hands up and say I'm wrong. If you found this video useful or informative, please leave a like, subscribe and share. Until the next video guys, remain legend.